Hello everyone, I am Valkyrie of Night, and today I am going to introduce you to environmental tech. Alright, first off you're going to want to craft an assembler. It's pretty easy to craft, you just need two obsidian some, and a piece of litharite. And litharite's pretty easy to get too. It's just some lime dye, some cactus green, a diamond, and four flint. Then, First, you're probably going to want to make a void or miner. So, right here, tier one. Now, to set this one up, you're going to need 24 structure frames, tier one or above. You can mix and match them, and that's okay. 20 structure panels, two laser cores, and one laser lens of any type. And then, once you complete the build, it's going to look like this. You'll also want to make sure that there's a clear line of sight from the controller down to bedrock so that the laser can form like that. And you'll know that the multi block is functioning when the laser lights up like that. Let's get a chest, put it on the side. Also, let's get some power. Let's just throw a solar panel on top. And then eventually this will start gathering resources. Now the reason why you're going to want to go with a void or a miner first is that it gets the next tier of crystals, erodium, and it also gets litharite, so you no longer need to craft that if you do not want to. Next I'm going to show you the solar panels. The solar panels you can equip one type of modifier and that is the piezo modifier. And what this does is allows the solar panel to generate energy off of the vibrations caused by the rain hitting the solar panel and the thunder of course. So those can be useful if you want to generate a little extra energy when you're when it's raining and thunderstorming. Normally the panel wouldn't generate any energy during that time. Next I'm going to show you the lightning rods. These guys can generate energy off of lightning and any weather type, but mainly the thunder weather. So you're just going to assemble it and then throw some capacitors or whatever energy storage you're using right under it. Right, and a lightning Right, just hit it, and let's see how much energy we generated. So, two hundred and sixty-five thousand RF. All right, onto the nanobot beacons. First, we're going to look at the ranged one. Basically, this is just an upgraded vanilla beacon, and you can equip almost any of the modifiers except for the accuracy and the piezo. So, those two modifiers don't do anything on the nanobot beacon but the rest of them do except for on the range one you cannot do creative flight yet but that is a feature that's coming eventually so you're gonna want to power this guy so again we're gonna put another solar panel on top and then we're gonna equip some modifiers for this so this one's a ranged one so we can only equip Anything other than creative flight. Oh, actually the creative flight one. I'm not sure. No, that one doesn't work. So in, any of the potion effect ones. So this one's going to give us haste. Haste one, because the maximum level of potion you can equip for the multi-block is actually the tier number. So this is a tier one beacon, so we can do potion level one. If you had a tier six beacon, you could do up to tier six uh, potions. So yeah, you can you can equip any of these modifiers here, and they will give basically the potion effect that is in vanilla. Let's move on to the personal nanobot beacon. This one is very very powerful. This one has infinite range and can give you effects across dimensions. 
but there is a catch. It only gives it to the player that owns it. So if you right click it, you see that I own it and that it's using zero energy. If we go ahead and assemble that, let's bust this guy down. So we know we're getting other effects from this guy. Let's go ahead and put some night vision and some strength modifier on there. So this will give us the strength potion effect and the night vision. Let's go ahead and get this powered. And is there any chunk loader? Oh yes, this. Let's go ahead and, and chunk load this. Now if you chunk load this, this has this also works when the lo chunks load loaded. So if we were to get like a nether portal. We could have these effects in the nether. So let me show you that. So here I am in the nether and we still have the potion effects. This can be very useful and very powerful. And also, you can use the creative flight modifier and the flight speed modifier on this. So the creative mo flight modifier, you're only going to need one. And then the flight speed modifiers, you can have as many as you want at the moment. There's no cap to them. And once that engages, see we're a creative flight again. And now we should be able to go a little faster in creative flight. Let's actually get a tier 6 beacon so we can show you the capability of the speed flight speed modifier so let's go ahead and get that powered up we'll put a bunch of these flight modifiers on there you can pretty much equip this with all creative flight speed modifiers if you desire but you might not want to do that because server admins might hate you. See how fast we're going now? So that could be very useful if you're interested in going very fast in creative flight. And you can also use these without having the creative flight modifier. So if you have creative flight from another mod, you can use these still. And that about wraps up most of what's in environmental tech. If you need more information on any of the multi-blocks, you can always use the digital guide from Valkyrie Lib and then the environmental tech guide. And here you'll find more details about all the multi-blocks.